Hi, I'm Megha Daga. I'm the Senior Technical Marketing Manager at uh, Cadence for our Vision products. Today we are going to, this is a continuation, continuation session for our CNN challenges. We have talked about the compute. Today we are going to talk about uh, bandwidth, so memory bandwidth and the load store issue which is very common in the neural network because they need a lot of memory. We don't have a lot of memory inside our local memory space. So how to solve that? I'm going to talk about four different solutions here. Uh, they are four of many possible, but today I'm just going to focus on the four of them. The first one, generally when the neural network is trained, it's trained in floating point. So it's using those 32-bit precision data. But from the studies which have been done a lot in the industry and a lot in the academia, it shows that 32-bit is not needed for the accuracy. We can very well go down to 16-bit or 8-bit or possibly to 4-bit or possibly to 1-bit. Uh, but let's just focus on 8-bit because people have found with several studies that with 8-bit quantization, you are able to achieve a similar amount of accuracy very close to what a floating point data will do. So 8-bit is a good uh, way to compress the data which will automatically reduce your bandwidth by a fourth. So that is one way to reduce the bandwidth. And I will take an example of uh, AlexNet. We talked about AlexNet and we know that the memory requirement of AlexNet is somewhere around 250 megabytes in floating point. So when we go down to 8-bit, we have automatically reduced it down to around 64 megabytes. So that's one thing. Second approach which can be done is something called batching. So now batching is something which will be very dependent on the kind of network you have. If you have a network like AlexNet which has a lot of fully connected layers into them, three of them, and they are heavily uh, memory bound, a lot of coefficients are going into fully connected layer. So what you want is you can do multiple input frames, multiple input ROIs into a fully connected layer. So load those multiple input, use the same set of coefficients, and apply them onto those multiple inputs. So now you are reusing, and that is what batching means. And by reusing, you average out the load store requirement for that layer over those multiple reuses. Now batching, people have shown, it really depends on multiple factors. Um, we talked about the network, right? So network can be one of the factors. So inside network, what will affect your, uh, uh, the tiling or you know what kind of DMA uh, you use, your DDR latency, your system uh, related stuff, everything will affect what kind of batching you end up doing or what number of batching you end up doing. We can see it getting employed in several embedded systems these days and people are going from anywhere a batch of four to I have seen batch of 256. And all these different batches are going to affect your memory bandwidth. So this guy can probably go down to an order of 10 megabytes and you can see how now it's doable or starts becoming doable into the embedded platform. One thing which needs to be, uh, which we should know about batching is we need to find that minimal batching number which can help us making our kernels not memory bound and start making them compute bound and use our compute resources. So it should be minimum, as minimum as possible, because the more you have, that means you have to load more data to, or load more input ROIs. So that is a balance you need to create. So that's an important point to think about. Uh, the third thing could be compression, data compression. So we have seen most of these networks have a lot of redundancy into them. So these networks can be retrained in a way that you can create a lot of uh, zeros uh, present in the coefficient data. If you have so many zeros, you can have something called compression, uh, which will use this sparsity inside your coefficient data. So remove all those zeros and compress the actual needed coefficient into um, a file. And then that compressed 
data is loaded in and your embedded system should have a support for decompression of those. And then you can do on the fly decompression of those compressed uh, data which like I said needs a sparsity present in the coefficient and uh, multiply it by the data. This helps us in uh, not storing the irrelevant uh, points like zeros because there is no point in storing zeros. And uh, another thing which needs to be uh, taken into consideration while doing decompression is well, you are when you're doing compression, you have to store some, it's not just the uh, compressed coefficients which will be stored, but you will be storing some overheads with that, uh, something like a bit mask or something which will tell you where the zeros are, which will be used by the decompression function to know what to compress and how much to compress, uh, decompress. And uh, so you're, you need to figure out, do you have enough sparsity to do the decompression? So that needs to be figured out before we go into compression, decompression. Is it fruitful or not? And fourth approach, which is commonly used these days by academia and scientists are train the network differently. Reduce the network. So I should say train or reduce the network. So same example as Alex and Alex and people have found all these layers which are present over there. Some of them are not uh, relevant. You can actually have some reduction algorithms and reduce those layers into smaller layers. And that is what uh, something like SqueezeNet does. So SqueezeNet is a very similar algorithm to AlexNet, but what it has done is it has squeezed the network. It has created smaller uh, convolution layers and hence reduce the bandwidth requirement. So, and there are several experiments which are going on with changing the network definition itself so that you can reduce your bandwidth requirements. So those were four different approaches which can help us with solving our bandwidth uh, issues. And um, that's all for uh, the today's session. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for next. Mm -hmm.